2001 Occupation Health and Safety Management System. And hopefully everyone is safe. Excuse me. Please uh, unmute your... Uh, mute, mute. Yeah, mute your, <laughs> your, your microphone. And then uh, if you have questions, please feel free to put it. So hopefully everyone is safe. And you're keeping safe. You're using all the rules about social distancing. Uh, you all know they call it social distancing. I don't like the word social distancing because we are communicating and talking. So it's basically better to say it's uh, physical distancing. So we talk about occupation health and safety management system. And basically, a occupation health uh, and safety management system based on the standard ISO 45001 is a standard that calls for protecting workers. So the scope of the standard and the importance of this subject is to protecting worker and means protecting everyone, okay, in the organization. And we can use it everywhere. We can use it even home. We can use those principles and requirements about 45,001 at our home uh, to make sure that we all uh, keeping safe and we're not going to be hurt by this COVID-19 uh, disease. Uh, I mean, sorry and make sure that we will not also cause the infection for other people. So uh, historically, occupation health and safety management system evolved because of cost and because of labor organizations lobbying to make sure we won't need uh, rules and regulations uh, to uh, protect workers. Uh, incidents at work are very common and we have a lot of people dying on a daily basis because of incidents of work. And uh, our role and our obligation is to protect workers. Workers don't go to work so they die while working or they get hurt while working. They go to work to generate revenue for themselves and for their families and to make sure they live and uh, with their family in a good way. So we have an obligation to make sure that whenever we go to work, employees, workers, when they go to work, they are protected and they are safe at the place of where they work. So there was lobbying from large organizations and uh, labor organizations that we need to make sure to protect employees. So it started as early as 1900, you see, it's not like something new. And over the time, a uh, lot of re rules, regulations were in place. However, injuries and related costs were still there. So they provided a lot of uh, techniques and things like that. So um, basically, employees and workers and any organization, wherever they work, they have the rights, three rights, basically. The right to know, the right to know what risks or what hazards, source of risk, they are exposed to while they are working. They have to know that. So as when I'm working somewhere, I need to know, is there any risk to my health and safety that I have to worry about and to know? Then they have the right to participate. So uh, workers, they have the right to participate in setting policies, controls, assessing risk and making sure those risks are taken care of and they are controlled so they don't happen. And they have the right to refuse to do the work if they think with valid evidence that there are no enough controls where they work so they can be protected from any risk in place. So we need to make sure workers are involved and are uh, participate, they participate and they are consultant with. Uh, in 1969, there was a study in the United States of America for about 1,753,498 accidents at 297 organizations, all in different types of occupation establishment, covered 1,750,000 employees, worked more than 3 billion hours, and they came with a result that's widely known 1,103,600 accident ratio study. So for every 600 incidents with no visible injury or damage, near accident or close calls, this is what we call something that you are faced with an incident, but you're not hurt. So there are no visible injury or damage. So it was about to happen, but 
were saved. So that's what we call near miss or near accident or close call. So for every 600 No, there's no voice. I cannot hear. Okay. Yes, we cannot hear. No voice. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, okay. We just have a yes. small technical problem and we will uh, be back in one minute. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. كيف شباب؟ مين اللي عم يحكي؟ صباحو اهلا وينك مشتاقين لك؟ على بالغريب وينك مشتاقين لك؟ حبيبي انه اذا هالقد اذا هالقد مشتاقين لبعضكم ليش ما بتحكوا مع بعضكم بودر؟ مع الزوم مش فاضي ما بنحكي على الزوم كيف شباب؟ صارنا الميتنج تنقدر نحكي كلود غريب كلود غريب روح اطلع على الاتي في انت احسن لك <تصفيق> ليك كازن وما كازن وما كازن وما كازن وما بدي ايه ما معقول يظبط الصوت هلا راحت الساعة خمسة يلا يلا مش غلط يعني جايز مش الحال مش الحال دونت دونت بانيك هلا لانش بريك يا كلود لا داعي للهلع جايز جاست تيك ات ايزي وان سكند Can you all see it again? Is it okay? Yes, from us all. Yeah, you can see the screen? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. So we were, sorry for that. We were talking about the study that we said for every 600 near miss, we have 30 property damage accident all types and minor injuries and one serious injury or fatality. So in an organization, sometimes near misses happen. So incidents happen with workers, but nothing happened to them. They are not hurt, they are not damaged. And uh, so, but they don't report that. So this study is telling us it's very important to report any incident, even if the incident did not cause injury or damage to the to the worker. We all need to report the near misses so we don't fall into this, this issue. And it does happen all over the, the world that employees or workers, they are faced with a near miss, they don't report it, and the second day another employee is having that. So uh, the benefits of occupation health and safety are very important. It's reduce injury and health impact means that if there's no injury in the in the company uh, for the workers it's very important not to get injured or not to have get ill for the employer 
the company, it's very important that workers don't get injured because if they are injured or they are ill, then they will not work. And if they don't work, it means you are losing time. And it means you need other people to replace them. And this will take training, it will cost money. And if you have injuries, it means you have to pay higher insurance premium. So this is these are very important things that you need to worry about. So there are benefits for the organization, benefits for the worker in implementing a good, sound occupation health and safety management system. It reduces reduction in fines, penalties, and compensation costs, reducing incidents that result in liability, improve compliance. Improve compliance, when we implement occupation health and safety management system, we need to comply with legal requirements, and that's very important. Uh, and these days, um, compliance to legal and other requirements are very important. Improve employee relation and morale. When the workers, they know they go to a place that's safe, then this will give them motivation to work. Not like when you go to a place when you know you might be hurt at any time. So there's a big difference between those two places. And it's, more, it's very important for the morale of workers to make sure to feel and to know that we are working in a safe place. And of course, when you don't have incident, you reduce costs, you improve corporate image and international acceptance. A lot of uh, companies, sometimes they might, they might need a loan for their business. They might need some financial help. A lot of banks, they will give you any help if you are not, uh, if you, are, you, you, are, you don't have an occupational health and safety management system. Uh, occupation health and safety management system, this is an old one. Uh, this is an old presentation. Let me move to another one. Uh, okay, I'll stop sharing. Sorry. Uh, we need to go to the new one for some reason or the other. The new, new ISO 14001 is based on 10 sections like any other uh, management system standards these days uh, done by ISO organization. There's no sound. You cannot hear me? Oh, no. Strange why? I can hear you. I can I can hear you. Can you hear me, please? Yes, no. Uh, we hear you now. Ah, you can hear me now. Okay. okay this is uh, we can yeah, hear you. Okay, <laughs> great. That's fine. So we discussed that already. Benefits, the rights. Okay. We already seen that. That's quite so fundamentals of the occupation health and safety management system is based on identifying the hazard, uh, which is the source of the risk, and then identifying the risk related to that hazard. So 45,000 2018 is like any other occupation health and safety management system based on identifying hazard and identifying risk. Uh, hazard, as I said, is defined as the source of risk where the risk is coming from, um, so event situation that may cause harm, and because of that hazard, the source of risk, we might have a risk. The type of hazards that we might have in any organizations have two types of hazards, health hazards and safety hazards. One thing that you need to understand very well in occupational health and safety management system, uh, you can hear a lot of people talking about safety, and you probably see a lot of organizations saying safety first, Safety is very important, but they forget to mention health. So they care a lot about uh, preventing incidents uh, like injuries from happening. And injuries are very easily to be seen. However, health issues, getting sick over time, getting ill over time, are not things that you can see very quickly in the organization. So you might, over time, we might as workers over time develop some sickness, some illness, and then it cannot be shown before like a certain time. If we take, for example, the COVID-19, 
you might develop it and you don't see it. And some people, they might have it and they don't know they have it. So illness is very more, is more important than safety. They're both important, but you need to worry about illness, not only safety. So health hazards like chemical, ink and paints can get irritants, solvent, asthma, oil and lubricant, skin disease, physical hazards, radiation, cancer, noise, hearing loss, drills, vibration, white finger, ergonomic, poor posture. So these are the type of hazards, chemical hazards, physical hazards. Ergonomic hazards is any hazard related to the body of the person, the, uh, the skeleton, okay. the muscles, all right? So that's uh, ergonom <laughs> ergonomic hazard. Uh, musculoskeletal of the person, you know, all the muscles or the, the things that uh, of the person. So poor posture when you sit, not in a good, when you use a chair, for example, you're sitting in an office in a chair and you use you sit the whole eight hours or seven hours of work using a computer whatsoever, this might cause back pain. Uh, repetitive work, poor lightning in the office, biological hazards, bacteria, infections, molds, yeast, and fungi, asthma, viruses, infections, psychosocial hazards like work-life balance, stress, for example, working uh, at night, uh, and there's a balance between work and, and life, uh, family problems, alcohol abuse, lifestyle, smoking. So all these things can cause health hazards and we need to worry about health hazards the same way we worry about safety hazards. They're all the same hazards, chemical hazards, because safety issues and they cause health issues. Chemical issues, uh, so chemical hazards as a safety issue, spills, so spills and trips, that will cause injury, splashes, burns, fumes, eye injuries, <clears throat> physical, electricity, electrocution, machinery, entrapment, trailing leads, ergonomic hazard, overstretching, awkward postures, twisting and dropping loads, <clears throat> biological hazard, loss of cont uh, containment, infection, air conditioning, human-to-human -human and 